Hi guys and welcome back to my latest how-to video. It's been a long time since I've done one but I've been trying to kind of get a few things sorted in my life, getting uh, back to sort of thinking about business opportunities. And I've been researching one that I think uh, you guys might be interested in doing and might well enjoy me telling you what I think is the reality behind the business. Now primarily I'm based in the UK so if you're in the USA obviously you'll have to look for similar services to the ones I'm going to show you on this video today. Um, big shout out to anyone who subscribed from the Amazon Kindle video that's had an amazing amount of success for me anyway, 32,000 hits at the time of recording this. Um, again, just want to give you guys an overview. Just before we get cracking at the detail, um, what I want to press is that these videos are not designed to tell you that you can't do it. They're designed to tell you what obstacles you've got to overcome to, in order to be successful. Any business, to be honest, you can do, you can succeed. There's someone somewhere making it work, but you've got to push. So I want to kind of go against this idea that you can do anything very, very easily. So anyway, just to bear that in mind, it's not a, a doom laden, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that. It very much is um, encouraging you to get over the obstacles. Okay, so courier, what's the attraction of the business? Well, in essence, you um, take an instruction from any company, excuse my uh, phone there, you take an instruction from any company that is what they pay you to take uh, a package or letters or um, a pallet, depending on the size of your vehicle, which we'll get to in a minute, from A to B. And you're paid on usually per mile basis. Um, roughly speaking, in a, um, a job that will take you sort of three hours to do, um, you can earn anywhere from like 150 to 200 pounds and um, so it's quite a lucrative business in theory and it's one of these businesses that looks great on paper because you know you're driving around you haven't got a boss to worry about you've just got to get from A to B drop the package off maybe even get a package to take back the other way and potentially earn hundreds of pounds per day but there's obviously things that you've got to think about that you, you might not be aware of straight away that kind of goes against this what on paper looks like a really attractive opportunity um, First thing you've got to think about is your vehicle. Um, obviously doing a courier job means that uh, there's a lot of wear and tear on the vehicles. You're going to be traveling many hundreds of miles per day. In fact, if you have one decent job, you're likely to do more miles that day than what you are pretty much throughout the whole of a normal working week, perhaps even a working month. So wear and tear on your vehicle becomes quite significant. Obviously fuel costs, you've got to factor that in. Um, if you're going again on a three hour journey, six hour drive, probably in most cars nowadays, you're looking at a tank of fuel and you've got to again factor that into your hourly rate. Um, insurances, which we're going to go on to in a minute, I'm going to show you a few things on the screen, which is different to the last video. Um, but also finding the work and, and that's the, the hard part. When you're on the road, you're not going to be able to take calls on unless you've got an up-to-date system, but you're not going to be able to do any research, give quotations if you're driving. So you've got to factor in time where you're going to do your office work. If you're lucky enough to have a partner who will do that with you. But again, finding the work, because you've got to set off um, from your local area. Because one of the things people don't think about is if you have to travel 100 miles to get a job, to then drive somewhere else, to then drive back, and that's, you know, that's dead mileage that you need to factor in in terms of a, of a cost. So what we're going to do now, guys, is just we're going to move down to the screen so you guys can see the screen. And I'm going to show you a couple of things that you need to be aware of, and a couple of opportunities that do actually exist, and a couple of things you need to be aware of in terms of currying. So let's go and have a look at the screen. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is some information about insurances. Now, all of the information I'm giving you relates to the UK. You need to make sure that you research what's required in your country, like the US or over in Europe or whatever. Um, now in the UK you need three types of insurance to operate a business as a courier to make sure that you're fully covered for all eventualities. The first type of insurance that you need is, is courier insurance, that's the, the driving insurance. If you only have fully comprehensive insurance to drive around, which is for business, pleasure, social, sorry, social uh, activities and driving, you're not covered for business use. So you need a courier insurance to cover you for the business of being a courier and having goods in transit. Now you also need goods in transit insurance itself. Now that ensures the items that you're carrying uh, in the event you have an accident, any damage to the items is covered by that specific insurance. It's not covered by your courier insurance or public liability insurance. 
Now, that's the third type that you need, public liability insurance, which is uh, insures you against any legal action that's taken against you. If you get into a dispute with a client, uh, you're covered. So you need those three insurances. But obviously, take advice first. There's plenty of, through your local council, there'll be business enterprises, uh, initiatives that you can get in touch with to help you. There used to be Business Link. Um, get in touch with an advisor. Just double check that you're doing everything right because obviously this advice here I'm giving you in good faith but obviously it's your own responsibility to make sure that you're operating correctly and within the law at all times. Now in terms of once you're all set up and you've got your insurances and these are all costs that you've got to think about in terms of setting up. You've got your cost of your van, you've got your cost of your insurances, you've got your cost of membership. There's something like the Courier Exchange in the UK which is a, a they brand themselves as the UK's most trusted courier network uh, because they offer people the opportunity, they offer drivers the opportunity to register and try and bid for work, try and find work, because that's obviously the key. If you're not driving items from A to B and getting the mileage earnings, you're not at work. You're just waiting for, well, you're technically self-unemployed, aren't you? So the key thing for any successful business is to get revenue. The way you get revenue as a courier is to drive things around. So this website helps you get uh, in place. Now, plans and pricing. This is correct as of June 2017. Uh, is around about £50 a month. And you can sign up on a subscription basis and, and there's obviously limits to how many loads you can have and you know how many vehicles you can have and so on. So it's not cheap, but it's again, it's a, it's a ready uh, stream of work. Now, just as an example, this is the type of work. Bearing in mind that this, um, I'm not actually a member of this, I'm just giving you the information about the business. And obviously these are suggested loads that are available where it gives you the pickup time here and the date it's got to be picked up which is that's actually tomorrow so basically from early morning tomorrow and you're setting off from the postcode areas um, and you know like I say there's always you've got to look for loads around your local area if, like for myself I'm in the northeast and I don't actually see on here any uh, Doncaster is probably the nearest however that's a good 100 miles, 120 miles away from me. So that's dead mileage, really, uh, that I have to factor in as a, as a loss, essentially. And then you've got things like Belfast. And again, it's worth looking at, at on the right-hand side here, where you've got small van, uh, you've got Luton van, you've got uh, not many for just car users. A lot of, if you've got a small Sprinter van, like a Citroen, uh, C, a Citroen Bilingo that I used to have, um, that would be it fit you in. So you've got to be thinking about this as you set up as a courier. What type of van are you going to use? And obviously, the bigger the van, the more it's going to cost you for the insurances to cover you as well. Um, so that's something to think about. Locally, there's a new opportunity springing up um, with Amazon for the Amazon Flex system. And I could, I could, and may well do a video about Amazon Flex. Um, this is my local depot here, the Newcastle depot. Um, and I, I went through the sign up process. It's quite involved. It's, it's very proper in terms of getting you signed up. And it says make 12 to 15 pounds per hour. Um, I've had a couple of offers. Um, didn't actually take them because I'm currently employed again after the general election. Um, but I got a couple of offers. One of, the, one of the downsides that you need to be aware of of Amazon Flex um, is at the minute uh, they don't have a lot of work per driver because they currently pay the career insurances, etc., etc. And they're such a huge company that can afford to do that. However, as of the end of this month, which by recording this video is going to be in a, in a week or so's time, I believe they're no longer uh, going to be paying the insurances for drivers. So one of the challenges the driver's got to now consider, if you want to be an Amazon Flex driver, and there's plenty of videos when you sign up to learn about it, there's plenty of stuff on YouTube to have a look at. However, when you sign up as a driver, at the minute there's not that many offers come through. You'd be lucky you can work sort of once, twice in two weeks or... You know, and that earnings will be like 50 quid per four hour slot. Um, and apparently you get sort of 50 to 75 packages to deliver. You're talking about going to the depot, delivering. The the um, app gives you a, a suggested route, apparently. And then you go back to the depot and pass back any undelivered um, items. So you've got to try and get all your items delivered. I think there might be an opportunity, though, when the end of this month hits, it may well be that drivers are reluctant because of the lack of work in, in many areas. They take on drivers, they just take on as many as they can. So you'll always get signed up and think, wow, I'm in. Um, and then, unfortunately, there's, there's less and less work. So drivers are going to have to work out if they have to pay their own courier insurance or that sort of thing, is that going to be worth doing? So something to think about, there may be an opportunity with the Amazon Flex to 
uh, get more work. However, only at a point when Amazon stops signing up everybody and make a decision to just take on as many drivers as they need in any one area and give them enough work where it's technically a job um, and just do it on an ad hoc basis, that opportunity might be, it might look great, but it might not be as good as what you think. So anyway, let's sum up and I'll take you back to uh, the, the camera. So I hope that was a decent overview of the type of thing that you want to try and get into as a courier. It's definitely something that I think is a, is a decent business that you can start. The key thing for you is obviously being able to afford if you haven't got a small van, that could be something you're going to rent. For me, roughly, I'm thinking the costs will be around three, four hundred pounds a month if you were to start from scratch with nothing um, in terms of getting this going. So your first sort of week probably would be your cost. So the key is to get is to keep work coming in. If you know and you're confident how you would do that, then you've probably got a good chance of setting yourself up as a as a courier and, and making a go of the business. And obviously, as you get bigger, you can get more people involved, more vans. If you've got a way of getting business, that really is the key, is just finding ongoing work. One thing I didn't mention as well is that obviously when you're driving around and you're just thinking, you know, for me, it's always going to the same city and down the same stretch of motorway to get down to the, the Midlands in the UK. Are you going to get bored by that if you're doing that every single day? Or are you someone who just loves to drive? If you are, probably this is the ideal business for you. So I hope that's a really useful introduction. That's all it is. It might give you a few ideas. It's by no means... A comprehensive guide um, I may well come back I'm going to try and set up an affiliate link for uh, some goods and transit insurance so keep an eye out for the next video that I do on that I'm going to ask a few companies about some deals that they can give uh, my subscribers who, who want to look at goods in transit insurance and that type of thing and maybe it can save you a few quid that way so keep an eye out for that enjoy the business if you try it keep an eye out for my next update videos on business ideas and I'll see you guys next time thank you for watching